Hi guys, welcome back. It's Mrs. Peterson, that lady who teaches art. And today, I'm going to show you how to review um, forms. So at the top, first, please put your first name and last initial. Remember, your last initial is the first letter of your last name if you forgot. And then where it says class, you're going to put five and then whatever you are. So if it's A or 5B or 5C, put that right there. That will help me when I enter these into the grade book to put yours in the right spot since there are so many fifth graders. Okay, today, like I said, we're going to be talking about form. So we're going to write our keyword here. Everything um, that we're going to talk about today all is under the big umbrella of form. And form is the opposite of shape. Shape is like this. Shape is flat. It's like a piece of paper cut into a shape. A form, on the other hand, is something that is three-dimensional. So it could hold stuff inside of it. It has volume. Okay, so we're going to be talking about forms today, not shapes. And I certainly still sometimes call them shapes. Um, and people who don't teach art probably call them shapes too. So just know the difference. Form is when it's three-dimensional and a shape is when it's flat. So for our definition, we're going to write 3D which means three-dimensional. And when you're figuring out um, how much volume it has, let's put that there, volume is how much fits inside. So I have a water bottle right here that holds 16.9 ounces. That's the volume of this. And I have a cup here from the hospital that holds... Um, 20 ounces if you fill it all the way up to the top. Those are the volumes, how much fits inside. And to figure out mathematically, the basic formula is going to be base times height times length. And the little dot in the middle is another way to write multiplication. As you get older, when you're doing algebra, you won't put your x anymore for multiplication because then you might think it's a variable. Um, so you'll put a little dot in the middle, and that means multiply. So if you see that, you already know what that means. Okay? We're going to draw a few forms. Um, so the first one we're going to draw is a sphere. Um, a sphere is like a ball, like the earth. It's round. So we're going to start with a circle. That's going to be our basic geometric shape. And it's okay if your circle isn't perfect. Neither is mine. And we are going to make this look three-dimensional. So we're going to give it a horizon line. The horizon line, remember, divides um, the wall from the table that it's sitting on. If it's outside, it divides the sky from the grass. Elementary students are so cute. Sometimes they'll take their paper, and at the top, they'll color blue. And in the bottom, they'll color green. And then in the middle, they'll just leave it blank. But we know, as fifth graders, that the horizon line is going to come down and touch the ground. So our horizon line can either go above or through our object. We don't put it under the object, usually, because then it would look like it's floating or flying. So I'm going to put it way up here right now. And above that horizon line, that, that's good, because now it's not just floating. But it still looks a little bit childish because in real life, you don't just have a black outline that separates the wall from the table. So we're going to shade this in using cross hatching, or excuse me, using hatching. Hatching is diagonal lines just one way. And students will ask me, what shade does it need to be? It can be anything that's darker than white. Um, if you try to go black, it's going to take you longer. So I just did diagonal lines, kind of a light to middle gray. On the sphere, we're going to have our light shining this way. So you draw an arrow shining on your sphere. Um, in a real drawing, we wouldn't do that if it's, you know, one of your final projects. But this is just going to help us review where is the light shining. So if the light's shining here, it's going to be the brightest up here and the darkest down here. Because this is curved, my lines aren't going to be straight across. They're going to follow the curve of the object. So they're going to be a little bit like a smile. And I'm going to do kind of sketchy lines. Under that line is going to be my darkest black that I can make with my regular pencil. We're not going to get out the good drawing pencils for this. We do have darker pencils than our number two pencils, but um, just for this, we're just going to use a regular pencil. And then we're going to do another layer, and that layer is going to be dark gray. We just want these to blend into each other. We don't want it to be too obvious where one starts and one stops. And then our next one's going to be middle gray. Notice all of these are curved. And then the last one is the trickiest one. We're going to go up to where the light is shining, and we're going to put the lightest little oval using the edge of our paper. I'm going to zoom in on that so you can see where that is. And then we're just going to do light gray around it. 
and leave it white inside that circle so that it looks like a highlight. Okay. Um, we've got our horizon line, we have our shading on the object, and now we need to get our shadow off the object. The shadow is always going to go opposite from where the light is. So the light's shining on the right, the shadow is going to go on the left. It's going to mimic the shape of the object. It's going to be rounded, and it's going to be about where the darkest shades are on your object. I like to do scumbling inside my shadow. Scumbling are the little circles. And so the first row closest to the object is going to be the darkest. And then it's going to get lighter as we get away from the object. Okay. And then your last, last step is going to be to take your Q-tip um, and blend. So we're always going to start with the lightest area but not white. So I'm going to start right here and blend that. Um, I'm going to blend my background. And then I'm going to blend my shadow. I'm going to start at the lighter area and go to the darker area. Now, a couple things about that. After you blend, you may need to clean it up with your eraser. And after you blend, you may have blended away your darkest dark. So you might want to just go back and hit that dark spot one more time with your pencil just so you see where that really dark place is. And now we took that flat circle and we made it look a lot more three-dimensional with our horizon line, our shading on the object, our shadow, and then of course our nice blending. Okay, let's go and do our cube next. And a cube is, it's going to start like a square. It's okay if your square isn't perfectly square. And sometimes kids want to draw their cube like this. They'll do a square and then they'll do another square up in the corner and then they'll connect. That works pretty good if you're just doodling on the side of your paper. But for this, I want you to try um, something a little different. I want you to take this corner and I want you to go up to the right and do here up to the right and here up to the right. Okay, so now it kind of looks like a table that got knocked over. And now this line is going to be really flat. It needs to be um, parallel with this line. So we want it to just be really flat across. And this line needs to go straight down. It needs to be parallel with this line right here. Just go straight down. Even if you need to erase a little bit like I do at the end, that's fine. It'll look a lot more square if that line goes straight down. Okay, now we're going to do our horizon line. I said your horizon line can go above or it can go through your object. So let's do that this time. Notice I turn my paper to the side. I can make a much straighter line um, when I turn my paper to the side than if I just try to go across. And now I can choose to color above the horizon line or below. So this time let's color below just to show you that there's more than one way to do this. We're going to start with hatching, which is your diagonal lines across. But then we're going to come back and we're going to make this cross hatching going to end up looking like there's like a tablecloth on this table. So with cross hatching, then I'm going to come back with diagonal lines the other way. Okay, so now I have my horizon line done and I'm ready to start my shading. For this, we're going to um, say that the light is coming from the top on this side. So draw that arrow on there. So we're gonna think about where would it be the lightest and where would it be the darkest on this um, cube. The lightest is gonna be a side that we don't see probably over here, but also this top might be getting um, a little bit more light than the other side. So this one can just be shaded in super light, like a really light gray. This side is going to be a little darker than the top, but it's not going to be the darkest yet. And then this side over here is going to be the darkest side because it's far away from that light. Okay. Now we need to do our shadow. Remember, our shadow is going to be the opposite from our light source. So it's going to come on this side. It's going to touch the darkest part, and it's going to mimic the shape. So if I just do some straight lines off of here... Some people think it looks like a uh, square, like baseball cap. And then remember, in the shadow, I'm going to do scumbling. So I'm going to scumble up close, dark, little circles, and get lighter as I come out. So I have my shape with shading. I have my horizon line, and I have my shadow. Now I'm going to blend. I'm always going to start in the lightest area. And then I'm going to work to my darker area. So I'm going to do the table next. Then I'm going to go to the darker side and then the shadow. 
And if I blended too much away, I can always hit it again with my pencil. And I want to clean up anything that got outside the lines with my eraser. And we're done with that one. All right, next we have a cylinder. The cylinder was always one that was hard for me to remember when I was your age. Um, a cylinder is actually like the shape of a can of soup. It has a circle on the top and also a circle on the bottom. And if I were to cut along here and go straight across, imagine if there was like a wrapper on here, right? If I were to cut along there, that would be a rectangle if I unfolded it. That that was the part that was really hard for me to understand when I was a student. But when we draw it, we don't see a circle. We see an oval. So we draw an oval at the top and then go straight down for the side and straight down for the other side. Then we're going to do a curve along the bottom. It's not going to be flat. If it's flat, it's not going to look three-dimensional. So we want it to look three-dimensional. And I better stop this video right here. And we'll go on um, to a second video so you can watch the other ones. See you in part two.